Let's see. Very good. All right. All right, uh, during the week, we are in Ephesians, and I've already read the scripture that, that we were going to open with here, so we won't have to reread that about being grace, by grace you have been saved. We are God's handiwork. Uh, what I wanted to talk about is what it says here. It says, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Well, what are those works he prepared in advance? So usually we got, we got our list, and that's what I started with this week. I started with my list, you know, my checklist. It says these are good works, and they are. You know, read your Bible, pray, sing praises, go to church, and those are good things, and we say, well, those are works. But, but when I think of works that God did, when Jesus was here in human flesh, they're far more amazing than just the little checklist that I have. So I'm going to kind of walk through this in a, in a, a little bit different way, I think. And, uh, and actually, I'm, I'm going to preach three messages in about 20 minutes. And then I'll preach, in, no, no. But this is kind of the way my mind went this week. And, and I thought about it this morning. And, and I know for a fact that there are great theologians and great pastors, much better than me, that would go, that's not proper expository preaching. It's preaching the word of God the way God uses me. So it, it, if we scramble a little bit, I hope it all makes sense by the time it's done. Now, you know, that's the only question I ever ask. It wasn't too long or too short. Did it make sense? And that's why I like to do handouts so that we can... We can track together. Okay, so there on your handout, there's Ephesians uh, chapter 2, 8 through 13, I think it is. We won't read all of it today, but we will be coming back to it. Last week we got hung on a word called covenant. How God made covenant with us. How he made covenant with Abraham and what it looked like. And that in a normal covenant, both of you would walk through the sacrifices that were split out and... But with God, he didn't do that. God did the walking. God made the covenant, and God's the covenant keeper, which is great news for us. It doesn't depend upon us. It depends upon our God. All right? So that's what we got out of last week. This week, we're going to talk about the, the work. There on the, uh, underneath the passage of uh, Scripture, for by grace you have been saved. Paul cannot speak of this glorious work God does without reminding us that it is a gift of grace given to the undeserving. I didn't deserve it, you didn't deserve it. And it's a work of God, and that's why I said, when we say, his work is my work. So if God extends me grace, I have to extend grace. And sometimes that's, that's difficult. We're, we're walking through a lot, of, a lot of things now, a lot of difficulties. And it's hard sometimes to extend grace to people. Don't you want to just, you know, I, as my old thing is, hit somebody with a holy two before, you know? Uh, come on, get it together, grow up, let's go. Uh, but that, that's not extending grace. And there's times I probably ought to be hit with a holy two before, you know? We cannot, there are your statements, we cannot believe in Jesus Unless God does a prior work in us. It's him that makes the extension to us. Paul talks about that in Romans. All right. Uh, no one seeks after God. No one is good. All right. And God comes looking for you. And he puts in your heart, I'm here. I'm here. All right. So we cannot receive this gift uh, unless God gives it to us. Now, I thought about this. This is going to mess up your theology a little bit, all right? Because um, I am one of those, um, it's all God, 
all right? But I have free will. I, if you can explain that, that would be great. But I, always, I, I use this same illustration all the time. It's like two rails for a train. You gotta, we have both, and they never meet. For somehow, God initiates in our hearts, and he gives us a gift, and all you got to do is say, I believe. So, and then you can argue with Calvinists about whether you can say no or not. I'll let you do that, okay? Irresistible grace, they call it. All right. So we can't believe unless God does a prior work in us. Since God initiates salvation, we should begin our evangelism with asking God, and this is what I'm asking for Bible school, God do the initiating and granting the ability to believe to those we want to see saved. Granting the ability to believe to those we want to see saved. So uh, this is an old quote. I think I got this from, who knows, it's not mine, all right? Before we talk to people about God, we need to talk to God about people. I don't know if I got my English in there right. Before we talk to people about God, we need to talk to God about people. Lord, we got kids coming. I'm believing for children. In the north and the south and the east and the west, Father, you put in the hearts of people. They've, they're invited. They've received brochures. They've seen... Uh, we got an ad in the paper. We've, there are some cases of individually ask them. Father, you put upon their hearts that they'll have hearts prepared to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, that's a prayer for every day. The people that I run into will receive. One of the difficulties we're having, when I say we, me and Janice, is some of the kids we watch, not our foster kids, but some of the kids we watch Parents have wandered so far from God that it's, it's just, they're going to fall off the earth. And so we keep trying to find ways to counsel, evangelize, pray for them. And we have prayed for all of them at one time or another. And they've always received prayer, but there's no change. And so, very concerned. And Janice brought me some stuff the other day. She saw on one of the moms' Facebook, and she goes, I said, that's the world. What do you expect? I don't know if anybody knew this or even cares. But the world, and that, that's the world, that's a society and culture without a God, without God, is celebrating this month. And, and one of our moms had a thing about celebrating. And I'm going, what's up with that? Do, do I got to go back to the beginning? I made in God's image and he made them male and female. It doesn't get... Did anybody see... Oh, I told you I saw a bunch of stuff this week. There was a high school graduation and the man that spoke, how dare him, when telling young people, you know, pursue your education, dream and all this stuff and find you a good... You know, if, if you're a woman, find you a good husband. And if you're a woman, find, you know, find a good man. And, and if you're a man, find a good woman. And that's the way God designed it. So, you know, and then he went on with his thing. It made NBC News. Because he dared to say that you had, hey, as you grow up and you start a family, find a good husband, find a good wife. NBC picked it up. People are shocked with what he said. And I'm thinking... Well, you're really going to be shocked here one day because he's coming and you're going to have a big surprise. But, but we don't want him to have that surprise. This is where the grace part has to come in. What God has given me and what he's given you, I've got to have for other people. So I'm going to pray for these people that their hearts are, are open. They will receive. We need to talk to God about these people. Father, this, this woman needs you. We, uh, uh, this isn't about us, but I'm just telling you, this is real life. She took on another kid this week. Starts next week. 
Mom's get, going through a divorce. We have two of those now. We have a couple that used to go to church that's not going to church. And, and then we got this lady here who's... And I'm going... I told Janice, I said, I think I'm going to start a, a Saturday Bible study in our home and see if people will come. There's got to be something we can do. Plan a Thursday night church or something, I said. They probably wouldn't come, but... This is real life. That's why, you know, I get up here and we go... Oh, we went to church and it was nice. No, this is real life. This is real life. It's every day. Satan is gaining. I believe this. And this is not a good thing to proclaim. He's gaining ground. And this time as a church, we went, we said, no, no, that's far enough. You don't get my family. You don't get my neighbors. You don't get the people that God brings into my life. You can't have them. They're not yours. And so, okay, get off that soapbox. Let's move on. All right. All right, I don't even know where I am. Okay, top of the next page, I think. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We'll get through this by Tuesday. If salvation was the accomplishment of man in any way, we could boast about it. But under God's plan of salvation, God alone receives what? The glory. God alone receives the glory. Uh, I have a Spurgeon quote in there, and I got another one. And I don't usually do this, and I'm not one of those people who hang out with Charles Spurgeon. He's dead, by the way, in case you didn't know. But, you know, I, I don't. I, I don't read all of his books. And then when you go to seminary, everybody reads his book, and they go, oh, did you read what Spurgeon said? I said, no, but you see what God said. That, that might be more important. But anyway, he says this. He said, oh, I lost him. Okay. He's speaking. Uh, you ever heard of Napoleon? great leader till Waterloo or something. I thought Napoleon did a good thing when on the day of his coronation he took his crown and he put it on his own head. Why should he not, why should he not take the symbol that was his due? So if you get to heaven half by grace and half by works, you'll say atonement profited me some but my own good works profited me more. No, it's not the way it's going to work, is it? I'm wearing this crown because Jesus gave it to me. I can't go, well, it's my, it was my choice. It was my good choices. I'm such a good person. God chose me because I'm so wonderful. I'm just this short of perfect, Mary Poppins. Practically perfect in every way. Okay, a little Disney flashback for you. Sorry, I'm trying to stay away from them. All right, but, but he gets the glory. God saves us not merely to save us from the wrath we rightly deserve, but also to make something beautiful, something good. Isn't that it? Something? That old Gaither song? Something beautiful out of us. All my confusion he understood, right? So he didn't just choose you to, to come to church. He chose you because he's, he's at work in your life. He's going to make something glorious. So when you get up in the morning, look in the mirror and go, well, God made me beautiful today. Okay, it might not be true, but go ahead and say it. <laughs> no, in the spirit, he has. He meets us. It's got, yeah, I think it's grace. But meets us right, oh, I know what it is. It's love. It meets us right where we are, but when we receive his love, it always takes us where we should be going. So he, he meets you where you are at. You're on this road. And he meets you there with his love and his grace, his sacrifice. And then he pulls us to where we're supposed to be going. And he takes us down the other road. That's grace. That's love. The love of God that saves my soul will also change my life. Has he changed your life? Or you just quit smoking and that was a pretty good deal? Or I just like to hang out with people, you know, that don't smoke, don't drink. No, it's more than that. This is a spiritual life. You have been, God's love is a transforming love. Paul wrote this. 
Paul wrote this. Paul knows all about transformation. Remember Paul? He's, when Stephen is stoned, Paul approved of it. And he's standing there holding everybody's coats while they threw the rocks. And so after that, he's, he's just heading down the road to do that again. Well, that was fun. Let's go kill some more. And God hits him. He knows all about transformation. How he was going down this road and love and joy and grace and peace met him right there. Stopped him. And his cold heart was transformed and softened. And God used him to write, what, a third of the New Testament. We still follow him today. So the thing about Paul is he knows what it's like. He knows what it is to be lost. He knows what it is to be going the wrong way. He knows what it is to, to persecute Christians and then be changed to become a Christian and then work very hard at, at sharing that love and that grace that he received. We are his notes, your notes. We are his workmanship, his creation, something new he has made of us in Christ Jesus. And we know the verse, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. All things are new. The old has passed away. The new has come. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. All right. Something new. Something you did not have. Here's the Spurgeon quote that I mentioned earlier. The spiritual life cannot come to us by development from our old nature. See, we can't make ourselves better. Oh, we can improve certain things. But a transformation that's heaven bound? No. The spiritual life cannot come to us by development from our old nature. I've heard a great deal about evolution and development. But I'm afraid that if any one of us were to be developed to our utmost apart from the grace of God, we should come out worse than before the development began. Because that's who we are. We would come out worse. If we tried to change ourselves, uh, the world is trying to do it now. We've been listening on Sunday nights to some of the crazy things that are happening and how they're going to change you, transhumanism, how, how you know, we're going to add this to you, we're going to give you this, uh, you'll put this chip in, or you'll wear this bracelet or whatever, and it'll make you a better person. No, it won't. It'll make you more ungodly, more antichrist spirit so we are created in Christ Jesus for good works I know right now you're going I don't get this stay with me I'm going somewhere all right the train has not reached its destination we're still on the road because when we talk about good works we think about the things that we we do all right how about the wonderful work he's done the beautiful thing God is making of making of us is active in good works so now he's gonna he's gonna take us somewhere with all these these good works all right we're going to get there on the next, the other half of this page here stay with me these works have you noticed you had to write work again these works are just as much a part of god's predestined plan as anything else is he didn't, he didn't just plan to save you. He planned then to work in you and you will perform the works that he wants you to do. That's what he wants. It's not just saving you. It's great when you're drowning to be pulled into the boat. But then he says, now I want you to help me on the boat. I, I didn't just pull you out of, the, out of the muck and the mire just to pull you out of the muck and the mire. Now I've got stuff for you to do. Just like Paul, he was transformed. He didn't just transform him on the road to Damascus. Then he says, now i got work for you. What about Abraham? I mean, name, name all the he Bible heroes you're going to be doing in BBS. Hey, I need you to do this, and you're going to become the father of nations. Hey, Noah, build me a boat, because you're going to save yourself and your family. He didn't just save them to save them to leave them right where they were. He saved them to move them to where he wanted them to perform a work for the kingdom of God. All right. Where I don't know. Okay. These good works are valid evidence that someone is walking as one of God's chosen. Are you walking as a, in, in the way that people would say, wow, there's something different. Now, this messes with James a little bit, so I got this statement. 
Works play no part at all in securing salvation. You cannot work your way to heaven. That's, that's faith 101 right there. That's, that's Christian faith 101. You cannot work your way to heaven. All right? Works play no part at all in securing salvation. But afterwards, Christians will prove their faith by their works. Here Paul shows himself at one with James. And then there at the top of the next page is the James verse. In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. Am I doing anything? Is it all about me? Am I just protecting myself? So I go to church on Sunday and I feel good about it and I go home. But if I don't share that, or if I'm not growing in that, he said faith without works is dead. You, don't have, you got dead faith. It's time to wake up my dead faith so that I can perform the works that God has preordained advance, in advance for me. What good works? Oh, I finally got there. Oh, good. Oh, good. God has prepared a path of good works for believers, which he will perform in and through them as they walk by what? Faith, not by sight. When we begin to walk in faith, when I don't judge everything, and we'll do it, we'll do it. Well, we can't afford to do that. Or that's going to take up too much time. Or whatever it is. Where's my faith? Where's my faith? Once we are saved, the direction of our lives should be to walk on the path of, oh, here's a big word, obedience to God in everything. Because only when I'm walking with the Lord, only am I walking in obedience, can I do the next few verses that I'm about to read. This is Jesus in John 5. My father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. God is always at work. He doesn't take days off. He doesn't take vacations. By the way, either does the devil. But God never takes off. He's always at work. Every day, he can teach me something. Every day, I can hear his voice. Every day, I can learn a little bit more. I can pray. I can worship. I can acknowledge his presence. Also from the book of John, Very truly I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. Well, if he can't, either can I. He can only do what he sees his father doing. Now stop there. What is God doing? What do you see the Father doing? Oh, I don't see nothing. Then we have a problem. We have a problem. If I'm not seeing God at work in me, in my family, in my church, in my community, in my nation, we have a problem. What do you see God doing? He said, I only do what I see. Well, if I don't see God at work, uh, you know, what am I going to do? Nothing. What do you see him doing? What's he pulling on your, putting on your heart? What's he saying to us on a regular basis? All right. We know some of the fundamentals. Again, it's kind of that, what, what do I need to do? And it, it, everybody here has heard, heard these kind of things. You need to have a quiet time. Okay, you need to have a quiet time. But that's not the works. That's prepared to do the works to me. All right. Very truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing. You can't see him if you're not near him. Because whatever the father uh, does, the son also does. For the father loves the son, shows him all he does. Yes, and he will show him greater works than these so that you will be amazed. Ah. He's going to, you, you think you've seen something? You're going to see better. You're going to see greater works than you have just seen. You're going to see greater works than feeding the 5,000. You're going to see greater works than seeing the lame walk, the blind see, the deaf hear. All right? The lame walk. All those things that he, that he does in, in Matthew 11. We did through all those things back when we did John the Baptist. And I said, that, that's the church. That's a picture of the works that we could be doing. Are we at his work? All right. 
John 6, 28. Then they ask him, here we go. What must we do to do the works God requires? And Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. What? I thought it was ugh, work, digging holes and planting poles and running lines and, and all that. Well, that comes. That comes. But he said, the work is this. The work that I'm asking you to do is to believe in me. That's the work. I've done the work. What I need you to do is to believe. The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. That's my first part of my work. That's the first thing I need to do. I have to believe in Christ. There's no work for God unless I believe. Works of God can be seen. All right, because we just kind of went through that, just to review up there. Works of God can be seen. I wonder, I don't really need to wonder. You drive by out here, I wonder what people think we're doing in here. Eating casseroles. Probably. I don't know. But can the work of God be seen? Does anybody in this city know we're here? Do they know what we're doing here? I don't know. I hope so. I hope the works of God can be seen. I hope we're known by working, doing things for God. Next line, I've already said it. Works of God start with belief in Jesus. Okay. They can be seen. Belief in Jesus. John 14. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. Oh. Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. Well, what's that, Lord? What is that? What have you done? Oh, I don't know. Let's go back to our list again. Let's go back. The blind see, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the lame walk, the deaf hear, you know, the dumb shall speak, all those things. Are we sharing the good, good news of Jesus Christ that's changing lives? Very truly, I tell you, it would be in red letter in your Bible. I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. He's going to send you his Holy Spirit and his Holy Spirit will come into our lives and we're to do these greater things. I wonder how much... We're, we're worried about being rejected or we'll be thinking, wow, you guys are wacko or you really believe in deliverance or you really believe in healing. You believe in salvation. You believe in eternal life. Come on. Yes. Yes, we do. Verse 13. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. That's a big word, anything. Now, we all know that, we already know the theological answer to that. It'll be his will. Doesn't mean I can say, Lord, I want to go home and look at my mailbox and there'll be a million dollars. You know, now that I've thought of that, I'm going to go home and check my mailbox. No. That's not what he meant. What furthers... What glorifies his name, what moves his kingdom forward into people's lives, all right? What is that? Remember, God has a purpose and a goal for us. And it's not just about my self-happiness. Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. Oh, my goodness. You become charismatic Pentecostal. No, I'm just reading the scripture. I'm just reading the scripture. I, you know, somebody's going to go, what, what, what's wrong with you people? I, I'm, I'm an open book. I'm kind of half angry, half at myself. But I have decided 
Because I don't know if you knew, but I had a birthday. So every one of those, I'm getting a little bit younger. No. And so how many more years is God going to allow me to do this? I'm planning on a lot more. All right. But so I, I've just decided and I made this decision years ago and I, I don't always walk in it. But I always tell people that or I always say this. I will I will not hold back anything I believe. Does that make sense? Because I've had pastors say that. I had a friend of mine that was a pastor for a long time. He goes, well, I've never, really never taught what I really believe. And I go, well, maybe it's time to go. And what I mean, and I know what he meant. Kind of some of this that I just shared. You read that, he goes, you're going to do greater works. And we're going, us? He goes, you! I chose you before the foundation of the world. Ephesians 1. You are redeemed. You've been bought with the price of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, you, us. Things will happen. It'll be warfare. We're already in it, in case you didn't know. So I'm just saying, be alert to Scripture, not to what all of us try and, and, and make for it to be, all right? Uh, to fit uh, whatever, denominational things or whatever. All right. Oh, oh, here we go. All right. I'm off my soapbox. All right. No, I'm not. Okay, last page. If you think I was on a soapbox, you better hang on to your chair. All right? I'm about to, I'm about to take you. I, I'm praying that the Lord will take us closer to him. Top of the last page. God doesn't waste time or energy, and I would add words. He does not waste words. As he made you for a reason to fulfill his purpose for such a time as this. His purpose for such a time as this. He chose us. I, I'm bringing this up all the time. He looks down that telescope of time and he goes, uh, right there, 2022, this is who I want there. Because they're going to take my word, they're going to believe it, and they're going to act on it. As the day gets closer. You know, a, another thing. We all know this verse. And I probably misquote it now that I'm trying to think of it in the back of my mind. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves. All right. And then it says, and even more so as you see the day approaching. Does that mean I need to come more than an hour on Sunday morning, an hour and a half? Yeah. As we see that day approaching, it would be prayer times. Maybe we just open the place up and say, hey, every Thursday is prayer time. You come from 10 to 6 anytime you want. You come in here and pray. I mean, there, there's just more that God wants to do. All right? All right. Think... Uh, Am I up there? Yes, thank you. Thank you, doctor. Uh, speaking of God choosing you, the word of the Lord came to me, this is Jeremiah, saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, being Jeremiah, I do not know how to speak. I'm too young. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. He just got corrected. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and rescue you. God picks people for certain times. He's picked us for this time. He picked Jeremiah for that time. And he says, don't say. What, what was Jeremiah doing? He looked at himself. Remember a guy named Moses? God said, I want you to go to Egypt and talk to Pharaoh. And Moses goes, duh, 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 I, I, I stutter. And God says, no, no, no. Go. That's when we look at ourselves. And we kind of look at ourselves and we go, well, I'm this age, I'm that age, I'm this way, I've got this education. You know, whatever. Look to the Lord. That's why he corrected him so quickly here. I, I, just, I, 
I've set you apart, appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah goes, I don't know how to speak. And he goes, do not say that. Does God ever say that to you? Don't say that. I say that to my kids sometimes. Don't say that. But, but go to God and go, oh, we can't do that. And I feel like God would say, don't say that. It's not about you. Look to me to be your deliverer, your power. All right? The one that will uphold your hand with my righteous right hand. We are clay in the potter's hands. We know that. That's what you are. So if I'm going to do good works, I've got to submit to the Lord. I have to believe in Christ. I have to give in. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, or believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. All right. Okay. I hope I got this. So Jeremiah, a little farther down, because this, this is a word for all of us. All right. This is a word for us, because we live in a culture, society, a world that is pursuing evil. I think we're right back in Genesis 6. And he said, the heart of man is continually pursuing evil. That's, that's just kind of where we are. All right? When you can celebrate evil and look down on people who don't celebrate your sin, we're there. All right? it, it just doesn't get any worse. Get yourself ready. All right? I want to do good works. I want to do the things God called me to be. Uh, be the person I'm called to be. Stand up and say to them, Whatever I command you. Can you imagine that? Much like I told the story about the man who just spoke uh, at a graduation. I just felt like that, that's him. Stand up and you say, do not be terrified by them or I will terrify you before them. <laughs> no, you don't want that. Don't be afraid. Speak the truth. I know, Ephesians, we'll get to it a little later. Speak the truth in love. Always, always. Today, I have made you a fortified city, an iron pillar, a bronze wall to stand against the whole land. Woo! Against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you. But you will not, but will not overcome you. For I am with you, and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. Can you handle that? That's works. What's, what's, what's the works going to be? Believe in Christ. Trust Him totally. Walk in Him. They are seen. The, walk, the, the works that I do, the works you'll do, will be seen, will be evident. They will fight. This is a great promise. They'll fight against you. They'll not overcome you. If, I think yeah, there's no if there, but I, I, if, if I'll trust him. I won't do things on my own strength. I won't speak back to people in my own strength, in my own words, but God's words. Get yourself ready. Stand up and say to them, whatever I command you. Wow. Oh, but they'll be upset with me. Well, you might save them too. And if they're upset with you, I've just revealed their heart, not yours. It's hard. I'm not going to sit there and say it's hard. No, not hard. Okay, so here's what you've got to do. Uh, believe in Jesus Christ. Continue to grow in the knowledge of him. All right? Because what I want to know, I want to know what, not, not so much specifically what he wants me to do, but, but watch him work in my life. All right? We often say something like this. What is God's will for my life? Well, stop it. Why don't you just say, what is God's will? How about that? Let's just say, what is God's will? Because what I'm looking for, should I buy the red car or the blue car? You know, um, you know in, all, in everything, what is God's will? What is God's will? And his will is for me is to believe, is to grow. The next word is know. 
K-N-O-W. No, he desires a relationship with you. Believe in Jesus Christ. Continue to grow in the knowledge of him. No, he desires to have a relationship with you. If he didn't want to have a relationship with you, you never would have gotten the gift of grace. You never would have gotten the gift of salvation. So he does want to be with you. And then worship him, honor him, follow him. All right. All right, I think I'm almost done. All right. Now, I said I was going to take us someplace. Works begin with faith. Faith. My total trust in the Lord. And then, like Jeremiah, he said, stand up and say to them whatever I command you. I'm going to bring something up on the screen. It's a short poem. It's got maybe 12 words. It's not mine. I love it. It's not mine. I, I admit it. And I don't even know the pastor's name that it came from. It's been around a long time. When you see it, you'll go, oh, I've heard that before. That's good. That's good. Because what we're going to do, I'm going to do what he says. Stand up and say to them whatever I command you. Do not be terrified by them. All right? So, are you ready? Okay. This, this goes a little bit with VBS, a little bit, but mainly about what God wants us to be. Spirit-filled, bold in our witness, watching God work. Everybody in a church, almost everywhere, wants what? Revival. I want revival. I, I used to say, we will have a revival. And I you know, know the scripture, that there will be a latter rain. I'm beginning to wonder if there will be. I don't know that. I don't know whether there will or there won't. I always had faith that there would be. And maybe there will. Maybe there will be a big sweeping of saints into the kingdom before he comes. I don't know. But I do know what we're supposed to be doing. And then let God work his works in ours. But what I want to do today, get to it, preacher. Okay. Today, you're going to think you just left the planet. All right. But I just, I just want you to, this is called, this is a faith declaration. This is not a, what do they call that? Name it, claim it. It's none of that stuff. All right. It's just something that gets, gets me thinking. I have an enemy. And I can overcome him. And there's story after story after story in the scripture where people have. All right? I hope I've got it. Uh, who knows? With me, you never know. Okay, there it is. Are you ready? Get back, Jordan. Roll back, Red. Oh, I love this screen up here. Get back, Jordan. Roll back Red Sea, fall down Jericho walls, you can't stop me. Can you say that? Okay, here we go. Are we ready? Are we ready? I'm sorry, I want you to say it. I want you to say it. I want you to say it. Are we ready? It, don't, don't say faith declaration. That's just for... Okay. One, two, three. Get back, Jordan. Roll back Red Sea, fall down Jericho walls, you can't stop me. You believe it? If, if, if God did that in the Bible, when they finally got the Bible all written, did he stop? I hear that all the time. Well, uh, you know, that was written a long time ago. Same God. He wrote it down so we could read it, so we could go, that's my God. I'm his child. And so I make this proclamation. Get back, Jordan. Roll back, Red Sea. Fall down, Jericho walls. You can't stop me. That's just like telling the enemy, we're here. He knows we're here. We might as well say it like, Jer like he told Jeremiah and say, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be bold in my witness, bold in my life. You don't have to be a scholar. The world is crumbling. It is. It's fading fast. 
And we say, well, that's our nation. Israel, you never know, one day to the next, they're going to launch attack on Iran or Syria or Hezbollah. There is a day coming they're going to. The world's going to be changed. Russia and Ukraine is just the beginning. That may play out for another few years. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I know there's a lot of people saying, well, look out 2025 or look out 2030. I don't know. I think look out today might be a better idea. All right. So part of doing the work of the Lord is faith. Faith that works is dead. We get that. So I'm going to begin to proclaim the word of God, to understand the word of God, and what is he saying to us. We are God's, you are God's handiwork. All right? Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. You're God's handiwork. The, the word is like poema. We get our word what? Poem. You're a work of art for God. And he's at work in your life today. You're a work of art. You're a beautiful work of art. Let's proclaim his glorious name in all that we say and all that we do. Father, the works you have begun in us, you will be faithful to perform. Therefore, the works that you do through us will continue. Father, uh, it is faith. It all begins there. Not just a declaration. Not just a saying. Not a cliche. But real faith. If, or maybe I should say since, believers know there is a heaven, we should fear nothing. There is an eternity. We should not be afraid. We're going to a place of such great glory that we cannot fathom or explain. We should be fearless today. I know where I'm going. Father, this day we're going to express our faith and our trust in you. That the works you did through Christ, you do through us. That the life of Christ is alive in us. It's the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives within our mortal bodies. Oh, Father, I, I, I don't know this, but I, I, maybe I do know it. We don't have a lot of time. Again, it could be years. Another generation. I'm thinking not. So Lord, let us, as we often say, get in the ark. He's coming. Thank you, Father, for the work you've given us to do. May we be faithful in following you, your voice. And Father, if today, if we've wandered from that, if we've wandered from that promise, if, we've, if we came and we're in need and you go, this isn't really what I wanted to hear today, but God's saying this. Father, that we'll have the boldness to receive the prayer, the encouragement that we need. Thank you, Lord, for your love for all of us here. Thank you we are redeemed saved from the foundation of the world. We've been called. We are your handiwork and we will be about our Father's business. And we will not be afraid as this declaration says. Roll, get back Jordan. Roll back Red Sea. Fall down Jericho walls. You can't stop Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your love for us this day. 
In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 As they come and uh, give us direction for our final song, uh, you need prayer uh, or great word from the Lord, you come and we'll meet you at the front.